This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. So, Mubix, if that is your real name. Actually, somebody said that you go as Rob Fuller. Actually, no, I mentioned Rob Fuller, and they were like, huh? And I'm like, you know, Mubix. They're like, oh, yeah, I knew Mubix. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Dude, it's good to see you here. Um, you, were to, uh, you were giving a talk on, uh, on all the fiddly bits, all the fun little stuff that you don't learn in hacker school, right? Right. So we, we essentially went over a bunch of different little tricks that Chris Gates and I that gave the presentation. Um, also known as carnal ownage. Um, and the stuff that they don't teach you in class, that, that's not in the ethical hacking books. It's not in you know all those little things. That Maybe the unethical Mubix hacking book. Well, nah. no, it's it's just the, the old school stuff that they don't teach anymore. Like, they think it's old stuff. So you know, it's kind of funny actually when I talk about old stuff like we've been like hard on development with these uh, the rubber ducky stuff and, and I, here I am using CopyCon. I haven't used the copy space con command, which is pretty much undocumented since like DOS 5. It's great for web servers, too. It's great for web servers. All right, so what kind of fiddly bits and tricks and stuff were you uh, playing with? So two of the things that um, we released, and we released a, a ton of different tools. Um, I, I used Railgun to um, access the Windows API through Interpreter. Ooh, oh, Railgun? I'm not familiar with Railgun. All right, so Railgun is an extension, to, or not really an extension. It's part of the standard API now of uh, Interpreter, and it is a direct access to the Windows API. So anything the Windows API can do, which is pretty much anything Windows can do, um, is is accessible now through Interpreter. So you're not sitting there writing net commands and trying to uh, go, uh, trying to find a way through the command line to do all of that fun stuff. Right. So one of the things I, I released, and which is my baby, because I, I worked on it for like almost two years. Um, is net discovery. So net discovery, when you run a net command uh, or a net view, you get a list of computers. And a lot of people don't know that, but it's yeah. you get Dude, net, people have been having fun with net since net send asterisk the hello world. Yeah. So, but the problem is you get a list of computers, and then you got to look up the computers. Like you have to find out what they are. And the API that actually powers that is. Um, Oh, I don't remember the name of it, but it comes back with a lot more data. It comes back with the version of the computer. So stuff that isn't actually displayed back to the user, but it, the data is there. Right. It comes. So another thing it comes back with is description, and everybody knows that that's in that view. Okay. Um, but one of the final pieces is this uh, services number, which is uh, essentially a, a cumulative number or a hex bit that gets incremented up as more services are there. So if the box actually has uh, Microsoft SQL on it, you can find that out. So net discovery, you can say, hey, show me all the SQL boxes on a domain. Right. And it'll do that. The other thing um, is once net discovery is done with enumerating all that information, um, it will then look up the IPs for everything. So uh, a lot of targeting when you're running Metasploit is based on IP ranges. So if you get on a box and you hit like 192.168.1. whatever slash 24, you might be missing like nine other offices that that company has, whereas the net view will show you all the ranges that they have, all the computers, right? So, and so you're not like sitting there just like trying all of them. Right. And since I'm using Rex, which is the um, uh, exploitation library that's in, built into Metasploit, GM and stuff, you can copy that out into a CSV. So there's your target list, right? Um, so net discovery, if you look at the very bottom as the cumulative number of services, that's whatever is the largest number is obviously the thing that has the most services. So I sorted it. Oh, so, okay, so the, uh, it doesn't actually say, oh, this bit is for this service and that bit is for, you know, IS and SQL and peach tree. Uh, peach tree, I don't know why I said peach tree. Maybe, maybe I, I had to do that recently. I had to do that recently. It was so bad. Anyway, um, it, it just says, oh, I have seven services. Well, it's, it's a, a number, but you're not going to know exactly what it is. But in the post module, you can say, show me only domain controllers, or show me only Unix systems, or show me only Novell systems, or SQL servers, or whatever. So I have a list of things you can look for specifically, and there's a ton. There, it doesn't say it in the output, which it is. Cool. Yeah, how did you go about l doing all of that? I mean, did you just, like, is this in uh, Python, or w w Perl, or w I don't know. I'm just saying, like, how did you go about this? Ruby. So it's all in Ruby. It's, it's just a post module in Metasploit. Oh, okay. Fair enough. 
it's all going to be released. All the stuff that we did is going to be released on GitHub because the submission process goes through Egypt, which takes four years to get at least one thing. And why does it take four years to get through Egypt? I have no idea. I mean, I understand that it's across the pond, but... Uh... I think he's just lazy. Oh, okay. Hmm. <laughs> nice. Well, it sounds like you guys are doing some fantastic work over at Rapid7. I know that you guys are doing the uh, the Metasploit uh, training here. It's really good to see you, Rob. No problems. Um, yeah. right. uh, where, where can people find the code? I know that you're always blogging and everything. People already know the URL. They're, say it with me now. <laughs> room 362com <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Now, it needs to be something more like... Straightforward, like usbrubberducky.com. No, no, it should be more hardcore, like like tacticalsoftducks.com. I'm leaning towards programmablehumaninterfacedevice.com. No, no way. absolutely not. Is that you typing? Kirby! Kirby! Meow! No matter what your project is, domain.com has what you need to register, host, and promote your next big idea even if it's fgghuh.com. Domain.com is owning the competition with cheap domain names and hassle-free service. Their easy checkout process and domain discovery system make it easy to select the domain that's right for you and set up your website without hassle. Domain.com will even transfer your domain name from another registrar and hook you up with an extra year for free for a mere, well, it's actually less than 650 when you use the coupon code HAK5 at checkout, that's right. Our coupon code HACK5 will save you 15%. Don't forget, when you think domain names, think domain.com. As you guys know, before we wrap up, we do want to check in with Shannon to find out about the Technos Photos of the Week. What up? This is from one of our home G's over in the uh, Ireland, European the area. He's in Ireland. Mm -hmm. Ireland. Archiver. He sends us a photo of his stickered lad top, which seems to be covered in it's, it's a, it's a, a Oh, I'm sorry. It's not IE, and it's a lad top because he's in Ireland. Oh, it's and a, he's a lad boy. top. <laughs> anyway. Oh, he's got a lad <laughs> And it seems to be covered in the Hack5 swag. Wow. You like it? Yeah, I love it. No, I want to ah, go back there so bad. I got I to gotta work out the, uh, the insurance stuff. But yes. Send your pictures over to feedback at hack5.org. And once again, it's time for trivia. Can I do last week's trivia? Yeah, I guess so. All right. This, this fictional IP version 4 packet header field was proposed in RFC 3514 as a means to identify packets with malicious intent. Evil server knows all about this. What was it, Shannon? The evil bit. Evil bit. Dun, 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 dun. I love April 1st on the internet. It's the best. Do you? Yeah. All right. Well, it well, used to be better. Now it's gotten a little, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this week's question is, the, the name Cyberpunk was first coined by what author in 1983? And if you think you know the answer, go over to hack5.org slash trivia for a chance to win something very cool out of my goodie bag. Your bag of goodies just keeps getting bigger and bigger. It does. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Or, uh, actually, no, no, that's the candy bag. You guys don't even know. She's got a candy, like... I do. I have, a, like, a whole a whole shelf that's full of candy yeah, at it's, home. It's, it's no, awesome. But it gets bigger. If you ever the wonder why I'm always, like, gets so bigger. Dee, 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 on, on the show, it's because of the candy. It mm -hmm. is, really. Yeah, spend right. an afternoon <laughs> Shannon and, like, sweet tarts. Let's wrap this stuff yeah, up. Yeah, all right. Peace, guys. <laughs> See you next week on Deer Kitchen. But the oh, yeah, subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. You guys know the deal. Also, get your goodies over at the Hack Shop, including new, new rubber ducky. If you're looking for the firmware, it's on the forums. Hack Tips are out on Friday. We're on Google+, Twitter, Facebook, and all the other stuff. I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. Trust your technicalist. Paul wanted a shorter C block, so see you guys. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Did that just happen? Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. Oh, oh no, that's something wrong with this. You can tell Libby like, yeah, DerbyCon was a huge success. <laughs> I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. Do -do -do -do. So, Rob Fuller, if that is your real name. Actually, somebody, no, no hang on, other way around. <clears throat> Sorry, I got this. So, hang on. <laughs> And it's your weekly dose of Technolust. That's not gonna work, is it? No? No, no androids? Oh. They dream of electric podcasts. <laughs>